Hello, my name is James Nestor. I'm the author of the book Breath, The New Science of a Lost Art, which is an exploration of the new scientific research in breathing, specifically how so many of us have lost the ability to breathe properly and how to get it back. So the impetus for this book was in many ways tied to an experience I'd had practicing Sudarshan Kriya. This was years and years ago when I was suffering from chronic bouts of bronchitis, wheezing, and minor grade pneumonia. I was exercising all the time, I was eating right, I was sleeping well, but I just kept getting sick. I kept having these respiratory problems. So I asked my doctor and she said, why don't you attend a breathing class? So I found an Art of Living weekend course held a few blocks from my house here in San Francisco, and I attended it. And then several weeks after that, I attended a long Kriya course. I remember walking into this room, sitting in this corner, and the tape started, and I was listening to Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and trying to really focus on every single breath I took. About 10 minutes later, I broke out into this enormous sweat. So there was sweat running down my face, my hair was sopping wet, my t-shirt was wet. The more I breathed, the more the sweat just poured out of me. So afterwards, some people saw me. They said, whoa, are you okay? And I said, no, I'm not okay. I'm better than okay. I feel amazing. I felt completely relaxed, but at the same time, I was bristling with energy. It felt almost like a cork had been popped somewhere inside my body. And I continued to feel this way both focused and energized for days and days afterwards. So I asked my doctor, I said, what had happened to me? And she said, oh, the temperature in the room must have been too high, you're wearing too many clothes, or maybe you had a fever. So none of those things were true, of course. She had no idea what had happened to me, and I didn't know either. But as a science journalist, I've been writing about science for well over a decade, and I began to approach this experience and breathing as a scientific pursuit. And I discovered research that was showing that breathing practices could help heal the body of many chronic maladies. They could also help heat the body up, just as I'd found. I'd even discovered monks who used a specific breathing pattern, a practice called tuma, tumo, to keep themselves warm during cold winter nights. And they were later studied by scientists at Harvard. So if breathing could do all these things for us, what else could it do for us? How could it affect our health, our happiness, maybe even our lifespan? These are the questions I had. So eventually I set out on a research journey which lasted several years and took me around the world. I spent 20 days in a Stanford University experiment testing how the pathway through which we breathe, either the mouth or the nose, affects the body and the mind. I traveled to Europe to ancient burial grounds and researched with anthropologists who were looking at how the human face and mouth had changed over the past few hundred years of industrialization and how this shrinking made it harder for us just to get air in and out of our bodies. So sleep apnea, snoring, other respiratory issues like asthma and allergies have all been correlated to these anatomical changes that have occurred in our mouths and in our, in our faces. So I also researched dozens of breathing scientists who over the past century had found some amazing things that breathing alone could be used for. It could be used to help treat asthma, emphysema, hypertension, chronic mental disorders like anxiety, depression, and more. I then conducted an experiment with Sudarshan Kriya at the University of San Francisco Hypoxia Lab where the researchers took blood draws before and after I practiced long Kriya, and they showed a massive transformation happening in my body. All the while, I was reading through hundreds of books and ancient texts, trying to piece together a history of conscious breathing practices, and found that the origins dated back to the Indus civilization in northern India more than 5,000 years ago. What I discovered is exactly what the ancients in India, and later in China, Greece, and almost every other major culture had discovered before me. That breathing could be deleterious to our health if we did it improperly, 
and that it could be a powerful medicine if we focused on it and adopted healthy breathing habits. So no matter what we eat, how much we exercise, or whatever genes we've inherited, none of it really matters if we're not breathing correctly. Along the way, it was inspiring to find that more than 60 independent studies have confirmed the restorative effects of Sudarshan Kriya, and that my experience with this practice wasn't just a fluke, it wasn't just psychosomatic or a placebo effect or whatever, it was real. Breathwork exercises like Kriya, science is clearly showing us, have a profound effect on our long-term health, on our happiness, and likely can help increase lifespan. I call my book The New Science of a Lost Art because so many of these practices have been ignored or simply forgotten over the past few centuries. It's now very inspiring to me that science is now rediscovering and confirming what so much of the ancients had said all along. I'm excited to see where all of this breathing research will take us next. In many ways, I have that experience in that chilly room in San Francisco practicing Sudarshan Kriya for setting me off on this wild and wondrous journey to what later became my book. Thank you for listening.